Hello and welcome to the Creation Cryptids podcast, where we give God the glory for his creation. I am your host, TJ Moore, and tonight we have a very interesting topic. This is an unusual topic in cryptozoology and one that not many people are aware of. Um, it's certainly um, not as common as people talking about Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or similar. And that is the very interesting case of wild coyotes, coyotes, however you want to say it, living in the UK. Now, I became aware of this a number of years ago, but I never really looked into it. I just thought it was an interesting tale. But, you know, getting into, well, being interested in people like Forrest Galanti, Josh Gates, those kind of adventure documentary filmmakers, I thought, it might be interesting to make my own kind of very amateur documentary. My studies and interest in just in wildlife biology was kind of peaking at that time. So I decided to study this a bit more. I decided to try and make my own documentary of sorts. And, uh, you know, got some of the equipment together. Uh, very amateur setup, I must admit, but I researched this and I came upon the journals of Beatrix Potter, famous British writer, um, and her journals, which is from 1881 to 1897, mentions uh, wild coyotes. What it says is that, um, believe it or not, there are actually wild prairie wolves, because coyotes used to be called prairie wolves, because they were common in the uh, the prairies of North America, and uh, that was their really original habitat. Uh, it said a gentleman had released three prairie wolves into Epping Forest, just a few miles from London. Uh, she goes on to say they, you know, reproduced and become become abundant, or at least there's a population of them. Or she said they increased in number, and that they're hunted just like foxes are, but they're never caught because they're very swift and they take to the wood. And then she mentions that two or three pups had been collected, cubs had, had been found and collected, and one was sent to the zoological gardens. And uh, what they thought was a regular fox cub, uh, she said, turned out to be a regular wolf or prairie wolf, which is the coyote, rather than, uh, you know, a, a grey wolf or European wolf or similar. So very interesting, and I do have connections at the Zoological Society in London, I'm what they call a fellow, um, which is uh, just a membership for people of an interest or studying zoology, biology, or a, a similar thing. You get to go to co uh, conferences and get invited to certain events, but I have met the, the president and a um, few contacts there now. So after this podcast, I am going to try and make contact and um, see if I can get any record of around that time, uh, late um, 19th century that uh, coyote cub did appear at London Zoo was delivered there so I'll look into that but um, let me just tell you a little bit about my journey with the documentary so I uh, I got to the location um, the location not mentioned by Beatrix but I found it elsewhere was this real I don't think it was mentioned to Mary by her but it, uh, they were released at Onga Park Woods. So um, Onga is in Epping Forest District of Essex. Um, Onga Park Woods, I found them on the map. They're in near a place called Toot Hill. They are separated from the um, main body of Epping Forest, that part that starts around the town of Epping and runs all the way down to um, Leighton, Wanstead in London. And it, it really, you know, it, well, it, I'd say it peters out really around um, hollow ponds in Leighton. If you talk about contiguous forests where <clears throat> you could enter trees and keep on walking basically through trees until you got all the way um, to the town of Epping, which you could, which is a number of miles. And obviously, originally a much larger tract of forest, but still, when we're talking about around London, it's a, it's a large tract of forest. And I have made an extensive journey by mountain bike through the forest right up uh, from Hollow Ponds area right up all the way well into Ching well up to North Chingford actually not quite as far as Epping 
Now I'm in Harlow and Essex. Uh, we drive through. We drove through Epping Forest today. Haven't been there in a while, but um, certainly parts of what's called the Lower Forest we've been to quite regularly. Thornwood, that area. But I digress. So I I went to Ongar Park Woods twice. Twice first to scope out the area, do some initial filming, and then I went back again for a night investigation, which I must say. Right, it looks great on TV and on YouTube, but these people aren't on their own. They're there with a the film crew. <laughs> They're there with a group of people. Doing it on your own is a lot scarier than, you know, uh, Josh Gates tramping around with the film crew and possibly weapons. Even though it's a UK forest, you know, I know for a fact there are big cats uh, wild here. But just the fact you're in dark in a pitch black forest and you don't know the forest well, uh, you know... It, <laughs> Yeah, you, you take some guts to do that, and I did it. I won't say I was the bravest at all times. Uh, I, had to, I had to sing a bit of worship and pray a bit to get through. But anyway, let me get to the interesting point. It's not me getting lost in the forest in pitch black and, by the Lord's grace, finding my way out with a phone battery that died, no torch. Uh, yeah, basically got out. But um, let me tell the interesting bits. So the interesting bits is... Uh, Onga Park Woods, I mean, it, it, the publicly accessible bit is small, but there's a lot of private woods in there. It's a quite, quite a creepy wood. For the, all the polite woods to do a night investigation, it's rather creepy because there's a, kind of this house in the woods, and uh, but there's a lot of danger warning signs, and I did hear gunshots. Um, it's just not a very welcoming place. Uh, a lot of love. I, I'm kind of an amateur mycologist. A lot of fungus in the autumn. Amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rusulas. Belites. Uh, very, very, you know, lots of biodiversity. They're very interesting little woods. But just, just a bit creepy, to be honest. Um, at some the times I felt I was on a Bigfoot investigation, not a coyote one. Uh, just just because of how it felt. And, um, you know, there's a pathway that led way deep back. Um, the locals that I'll mention in a minute, tell me about, have you seen the huts in the forest? Didn't see any huts. I mean, I, I, I probably <clears throat> didn't go as deep as I could. You can't go into the private areas and there's a trail through the woods that leads a long way back, but I didn't see any of these creepy huts, but I'm glad I didn't find them in the night because that would have added to how creepy it was being in really dark woods on your own, uh, in autumn time in the mud. But um, let me tell you the interesting thing. So the interesting things is that's where they were released. Uh, it's not a very frequented wood. I saw a few walkers there in my couple of times there, kind of lunchtime, late afternoon. Um, and there's a lot of private wood. There's actually a number of acres as you drive. You can see see the private area. And that continues all the way up to Ongo Park Woods. It, it's quite extensive. The, the, it's private, keep out danger signs, you know, people are not going into those woods other than the owners, so, it, you know, there's plenty of, uh, pl plenty of space for, for things to live in there, I found deer tracks, I encountered a deer on my night investigation, which initially it looked like forward-facing yellow eyes, and it, it was staring me down, and <laughs> I went into, oh my days, is this my first big cat sighting? And it's in pitch black in the woods. So I went into my kind of big cat defense mode and tried to make myself big and shouted and stuff. And then it started moving off. And as I shone my light, it, it actually moved off in my direction, but on a diagonal, I shone my light and it did appear to be a fallow deer. Okay, I'm not going to pretend it wasn't anything else than that. Um, but if you see eyes shining in the middle of dark woods, uh, you know, no weapon beyond a pen knife. Yeah, it, it was quite scary. But um, let me get to the interesting thing. So, uh, second time there, this is before night falls. I met a couple of walkers, man and a woman. I um, just stopped them. I said, hey, I'm filming for YouTube. I don't know if you've um, ever heard the story that coyotes were released into these woods. They had no idea. So I um, asked them and said, have you seen or heard anything mysterious in the woods? And the lady said, well, and I've got this on video and actually I might try and cut this now and post it now. 
But let me, in case I don't get around to that, let me just tell you what she said. She said, well, actually, now you say that, are you talking about like wolf howls? And I said, yes. And she said, she said, yeah, I've been out here at night with a dog and I've heard something similar. I thought, yeah, it's time to go home now. Very interesting. I will play that video. I hope to play that video now. So let's say it's cut in here and you can listen. So I've uh, met a couple of locals here and um, just wanted to ask them if they've seen or heard anything unusual in these woods before. No. No, no. No. Just dogs. Just dogs. Just dogs, yeah. yeah. Dogs and Regular other dogs. wildlife, uh, deer, squirrels, no, nothing wild. Nothing unusual. No nothing. howling going on. Um, I don't know about that, you know. Not howling. Howling's like a wolf. What, like a wolf, a wolf howl? howl? A wolf howl? Maybe late at night. Yeah? No, I've never heard it. Have you heard it? You've yeah. really heard something howling late at night? Well, sometimes when I'm walking with the dogs on my own, yeah, and I'm thinking, right, let's get along a bit more. Oh, um, interesting. I've seen deer. Yeah, well. A lot of deer. Deer's, deer's a food source, obviously. Yeah, that's, but, uh, I've that's... never been approached. <laughs> I've never seen it. Yeah, mm, very I won't go looking for it. No. <laughs> no. No eating deer either. No, no. no deer that have been eaten, but... I mean, I don't know if you've seen them, but there's, um, there's huts. Yeah, I saw a hut down here, yeah. Yeah, there's one there, but there's also one further back, that way. There's one okay. right in the middle of the forest, Right yeah. in the middle, massive, like, um, almost like Snow White's cottage. Oh, okay. What, um, what are they? check that out. Yeah, I will. Yeah? Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank uh, you for well, that. Finding deer there, though. <laughs> so hopefully you did see the video I recorded there and heard the um, witness testimony. But another thing that I'm not going to put in, which is part of the documentary, which I'm, I'm not going to, you know, a lot of film, I'm, I'm not going to put it together and release. Um, you know, that's not my call in. We'll leave that to other people. But I'll be excited to help somebody else if they wanted to do a documentary about wild coyotes in the UK. But anyway, it's starting getting dim sea kind of twilight time. I'm walking down this kind of fence path that goes deep i mean i can't see the end of it it looks like it's going for a couple of miles in and um there's kind of almost like i think it's wood knocks but i'm like hey i'm not in north america and then i realize there's a lot of squirrels and they're knocking things off the trees and they're hitting the fence but i did hear a yelp i heard a yelp very clear and a yelp is a coyote vocalization they are very vocal canids I distinctly heard a very coyote like yelp. It was coming from the left of me in a, in a tract of woods, probably I'd, I'd say um, about 10 o'clock. And I heard a yelp. So I've got witness accounts of wolf like howls. I heard a yelp. I'm trying to track, but there's a lot of dog tracks. Um, trying to see a fox from a coyote from a domestic dog. It's challenging, it's not impossible. Coyote will be more narrow, longer, sharper claws. But to be honest, I wasn't even bothering because I knew there's canids everywhere, dogs everywhere. You know, I'm not looking for a big cat or a Bigfoot here. So I didn't try in earnest to look for coyote tracks or plan that. But I heard a yelp and I got a witness testimony of howls. So um, that was the only interesting things I'd say from my time there. I did not investigate in Epping Forest proper. Uh, either the lower forest or further down, because the further down you get, there's just way more people, way more walkers. This Ongar Park Woods, there is not many people there. When you get to lower forest and then the upper forest, you're just getting a lot more people, a lot more traffic. The forest is cut up by roads. Um, yes, poss very possibly, coyotes, you know. Um, and I would say coyotes adopt to a nocturnal lifestyle around people. So it's possible they're there and they're just hunkered down. And when night falls, they're, they're looking for their, their insects and their amphibians and their berries. Because let me say about this in terms of could they survive, 100% coyotes could survive. The only issue is that they, they will gather together to hunt larger prey and there's abundant deer, fallow and muntjac. So obviously nobody's seeing a pack of coyotes or hearing them howling. But they can they 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 live solitary. They do, the joining together is normally to hunt bigger prey. I mean, they will join together, but they can live solitary. They can live off of berries. They can live off of a rosehip. I'm sure 
off of insects, rabbits. There's abundant rabbits. There's a place called High Beach, which is a warren. There's, there's rabbits in the, in the woods. Uh, a coat could probably take down a munchak. They're, they're pretty small, and there's plenty of them. There is uh, numbers of ponds throughout the forest, and definitely amphibians. There's going to be frogs and newts and toads that they can eat. Um, for an omnivorous creature, there's abundant food in Epping Forest. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, several number of miles long. I'm not sure how many miles from um, <coughs> Ongo Park Woods to Leighton, but it's, it's trying to think, uh, at least 12, probably something like 10, over 10 miles, maybe. Actually, I'm trying to think how long it is. No, it's, it's probably from that distance is probably 12 miles. It's probably quite a distance. So there is a decent, a decent tract of, um, a forest for them to live in. And there's other patches of forest. There's, there's other places that they could live, hedgerows they could walk along. So, uh, very well, very well, they could be there. I find in all of my cryptozoological researchers over the years that eyewitnesses can be unreliable, especially when they have limited zoological knowledge. If they are not somebody that has had any kind of interest in wildlife or zoology, if I had the study in it, then they can, I mean, let me tell you the funny stories from Devon where I'm from, where you get truck drivers report and they saw a bear, but they saw a badger which is, you think, how could someone make that mistake? But, you know, there's no bears in Devon. Just, you know, if, if it's saying, I don't know anything, you know, I don't know anything about ballet dancing, so I could really make a wrong call on that. Wildlife, I do know. There's certain things I do know. So very uh, much less likely to make a bad call on that. So if I see a coyote in, in the open forest, I'm going to know what that is. Other people might think it's a fox. They're not a whole lot larger than a big red fox. So some people just make a hey, funny colored fox, funny fox. So they may have been sighted regularly. We just simply don't know. I'm meaning to spend more time in Epping Forest. Uh, but again, you know, decent length, uh, at least for English forests. If they're adapted uh, to live nocturnal because of uh, proximity to humans, then you're only going to get them if you're out in the woods and very quiet and maybe staking out. I would say I did a bit. I, I set up a, a trap camera with some dog food, left it overnight. Absolutely nothing on the trap camera whatsoever other than me coming to it. Um, but I'm not saying if I didn't put my trap camera up there uh, for a longer period of time on a game trail, obviously left some bait out, which I might still do. Uh, especially in that spot that I that I would not get uh, pictures of a coyote. In fact, you know, this inspired me now. I'm going to get out there soon. I'm going to put my trail camera, my trap camera out there and see what I get because that, that would be big news. That would be breaking news, right? And it would certainly help the channel. But um, for now, I, from what I've heard, I believe, you know, Beatrice Potter's day, they were thriving. I'd see no reason why they died out. Nobody's hunting them. They banned fox hunting here now. There was nobody fox hunting in Epping Forest anyway. At least not for years and years and years and years. And again, Beatrice said they were escaping the fox hunters. Kite is incredibly adaptable. Um, I believe if they were there, there's a very good chance they're still here. I believe they are from my um, what I heard from the witness that, that coyotes are still here. In the UK, as credible as it seems, we've had m numbers of other species, North American species, that have thrived here. The uh, North American, the signal crayfish, has thrived here. Uh, there has been reports of raccoons. I've, it's just uh, anecdotal at this stage, but I know they're doing much better in, in continental Europe. Uh, no problem. No problem mm -hmm. for resourceful animals uh, mm -hmm. to survive here in the UK. Yes, it is a small island, but there is lots and lots of farmland. If you drive out of a city, you'll see acres and your farmland everywhere. I'm from Devon. There's a lot less people there. There is plenty of wilderness for our, the big cats there. 
plenty of wilderness for mysterious creatures to live in, plenty of fields and forests and, and rivers and lots out there. Don't think that the UK doesn't have its own uh, wilderness, because even though it's cultivated, it's still places where wildlife can flourish. Not to mention wells in Scotland and places like that. Anyway, it's been great to have you again on the um, Creation Cryptids podcast. We're going to cover so many interesting topics. Uh, I'm going to mix in my zoological, biological knowledge, uh, anecdotal things that I've investigated myself, interesting information you might not have heard. One day I really hope to be out on the field in Africa, uh, researching uh, particularly the Agogwe and the Nunda in Tanzania. But um, right now <laughs> I'm here for the British big cats, I'm here for the coyotes, and of course we can talk about any cryptids in the world, but the end of the day, we're going to we give God the glory for all that. Um, thanks for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please spread the word. And we'll catch you next time on Creation Cryptids.